Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Virginia Kilmore, and welcome to my studio. Well, today's card involves using our new blending brushes that are so wonderful. You can seamlessly blend between two colors so quick and easy, and I can't wait to share that with you. So let's get started. So look at this pretty card. Isn't that wonderful? I love all the blending that goes between the two cards. Um, and it's so easy to do with our new blending brushes um, that I thought we would do a card today. Now this card design is not my own, but it's very easy to do and very quick. Um, and I use the touch of ink that you can get if you spend $100. There's only two weeks, well actually a week and a half now left of uh, celebration. So if you want the set, oh my goodness, I use the set so much. The sentiments alone are worth the $100 because I use them constantly. But I love the two-step stamping, which you stamp the line art and then you stamp the colors in. It's a great set, well worth uh, spending $100 of good stamp and merchandise to get it. So to start with, we are gonna start with an eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. Remember, everything you need is here, and I always post it in the description of the video. And then I am going to put my Bermuda Bay right on there. Now, you're probably wondering why there's a big old hole there. Well, I do this all the time. If I need a piece, instead of going and hunting for a scrap piece, I'll punch it right out of the middle of a piece that I'm going to go ahead and glue down anyways. No one will ever see it or know that that piece is missing because there's cardstock here and we're going to put another card on top of it. So I'm going to set that aside to dry while we work on our card because that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, so I'm going to start with my blending brush. This is my green blending brush and I'm going to use it for the Bermuda Bay even though it is somewhat blue in nature. And I'm going to start out with um, a five and a half by four and a quarter piece of cardstock because I'm going to trim it down. And what I'm going to do is take and just rip another piece, which I've done earlier. See how I ripped it apart? And that's going to be my guide for this uh, pattern. I just have to sort of decide where I want it. But I am going to put a scrap piece of paper down first. Now we've done this before in the past. I'll show you some other cards when we're all done. Um, but we've done it differently. So I thought it would be fun to do this ripping technique that I saw online. I just thought it was so creative. I know my friend Ann Wilburn has tried it. Um, and she made some beautiful cards with it. Now, to keep it all down, I'm going to use old washi tape that I have laying around. Washi tape is great because it doesn't... Um, stick too much, but I do like to deaden it a little bit on my pant leg, just on the off chance. And I'm just trying to get a tiny piece of this to keep it in place. Same thing again, I'm deadening it on my pant leg. And this will help keep everything in its place while I do my work um, and not have to worry about it moving. And I'm gonna start off with the Granny Apple Green, and before I start, I like to make sure my brush is clean. Now you can see it's not, but if it's been sitting for a while, it's probably dry. And you can see there's no green coming off of here uh, on that paper, and that's simply how I clean mine. I have seen people that wash theirs. I haven't tried that. I don't know why, I don't think it's a good idea, but if I do, I, I promise I'll report to you. So the nice thing about the blending brush is that you can almost go directly on your paper. And you're going to build color slowly and evenly by not putting too much pressure at first. If you want more pressure, you can use your finger, but I find that the best way to use this is to keep your hands back here. 
Um, the brush bends and bows a little bit. You don't have to press super hard to get it to work. You want to start light and then slowly build. And I'm going to actually work a little bit darker than I did with that first card because I think it's kind of hard for you to see. But you can see the transition that I'm getting. And I always like to sort of work up into this area because I want that blending to happen between the two colors. And just tap it a couple times and then come back in here and just work my way across and around. And now if you get a spot that you don't like, don't panic. Just work over it by going over and over and over it. That's how you get rid of those hard edge spots that you might not like. I think I'm pretty much done with the green. I could go a little bit darker, mainly for you who are watching this because it's hard to see. And now I'm going to clean it to go to the next color. And this is how I clean it. I just start rubbing until I don't see any more green coming out. And that's a little hard because you're <laughs> right on green. But that is the process. And that looks pretty good to me. And now I'm going to go into my Bermuda Bay, which I chose to do second because it's the darker color. I always like to go from the lightest to the darkest because it's always harder to affect the lighter color. If you were to work from a dark color into a light, it just is harder to get that clean enough so that it, it doesn't show up in your lighter color. So that's why I worked this way. And again, I'm working down into here because I want to blend between the two colors, but I am concentrating most of my pressure up in here where I'm going to want my butterfly. Now, I did rip this, uh, you know, and you can see that it connects, but you don't have to do that. I could have flipped it to create a sort of different shape, or I could have ripped two sections. And when I'm happy, I just clean my brush again, and then set it aside and hopefully, well, I used this earlier today and it's still, I mean, I had no trouble going between colors, you can see. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take this out and um, take the washi tape off. You always want to be gentle because you don't want it ripping, but I think I'm okay. Now, because this, I had to use the washi tape, I am going to have to trim my cardstock a little bit so that it'll fit, but that's why I worked with a larger size. I decided that that would make some sense. So I'm going to pull in my uh, cutter and I'm going to trim off a little bit on the top and the bottom. And this should be five and a quarter when I'm done. Oops doesn't work with a scoring tool. Okay, and now I just need to take some off the side because I did uh, start out with a five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm going to take a little bit off of here. And there is my cardstock. So now all that's left is our sentiment and decorating it. Um, and because I'm using a touch of ink, I have the thinking of you. Um, and I'm going to use the greenery here on it. And I'm just using the line art. Actually, I'm not using, uh, yeah, I am, and the butterfly. So what I want to do is sort of figure out where the butterfly will fit best and get the most coverage. And I think it's right about there. So I'm going to ink that up really well. I just noticed that I got some ink on my finger, so I'm going to make sure to rub that off before I bring it down. I'm going to turn my butterfly to take advantage of all the color that's there. 
just give it a second for it to soak up into my paper. Oh, that came out so nice. And then, of course, my leaves. And that's a little harder to fit in, but it'll be okay. Okay. And now just my sentiment is left, thinking of you. And it's just a matter of where I want it. And can I get it straight? That's always my biggest problem. Can I get it straight? That's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm ready to put my card together. I'm going to use a piece of this ribbon that comes in, um, I think it's the Forever Greenery set. Or no, maybe it's the, um, hmm, I'm not even really sure. Playing with patterns. I love this. I love these packs of ribbon because you get several choices. And this ribbon is awesome because it's very stiff. So when you tie this knot, it really looks great. Okay. And I want it offset a little bit, so I'm going to cut it not right at the middle. I like it sometimes like right near the, the wording. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over, put a little glue on there, or uh, stamp and seal. There. Just had to get that started. This is matches perfectly our paper. So it's so nice. That's one of the things I love about Stampin' Up! is you end up with um, paper that matches perfectly to your um, cardstock. Now I cannot find the card base. <laughs> That's always real fun. I've got that. I moved everything around, but I can't find where I put my card base. It's probably right here in front of me, but I don't see it. Well, that's really silly. Oh, here it is. It was underneath my stamp set, and I couldn't see it, even though I picked it up. Some days I'm silly. Okay. I always like to make sure I'm putting it on correctly before I glue it down. How many times have you had to rip that off? I've had several times. I love to use the bone folder because it sort of squishes the paint. But you always want to make sure it's nice and dry before you do anything. And I always like to trim my bow one last time um, before I finish the card. As I've been doing for the whole month, I love these pearl round opals. They are just gorgeous. So I'm going to use those to do my last minute decorating here. You always need a little bling. I just think they really make the card pop, um, and who doesn't love playing? So there you go. There's today's card. Um, so simple, so easy, and hopefully you have enjoyed it. I hope to see you tomorrow um, at 1 o'clock, because I'll have a really nice card to share with you tomorrow. And... Um, don't forget, celebration's almost over. Oh, you know what I forgot? I knew I forgot something. It's going to show you these cards. These cards use the same technique, but back then I had cutouts and I had to use daubers. And you have to be so delicate to get that softness. You can do that with the blending brushes. And here's another example of one that I did um, where I had a cutout for a rectangle and I did the blending in three layers. Same thing, daubering, it's always a little, or sponging. You can sponge your dauber, but this is the bomb, this new um, blending brush. And they are $12 for three, and I am working on getting or making little um, plastic things for the back of them so that you know what color that is on there. Um, I'm doing that with my new 3D printer. So. I digress. Have a great day and thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.